cinematic opposition is that between Marvel and DC, Marvel is the most successful cinematic universe. Yeah. Yeah. The debate over cinematic superiority between Marvel and DC is one that is ongoing and probably will contain for many years. In this speech, I'll be stating my case as to why Marvel is a clear winner as the best superhero cinematic universe. My first reason is that Marvel has always had better visuals in production. Marvel movies started off with a high visual standard and they continue to uphold that standard. Marvel has some of the most complex visual, visuals which really stand out in movies like Thor, Iron Man, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Thor and the Guardians of the Galaxy visuals are so intricately detailed in creating other worlds like Asgard and Xandar to the point where the audience is so immersed that every aspect of it seems almost tangible. DC has yet to showcase visuals that can compete with, the Marvel, with, with that of the Marvel Universe. One of the most incredible showcases of Marvel, Marvel's visual effects is Tony Stark's suit. The suit, for the most part, is CGI and partial armor, with the effects, but the effects are done so seamlessly that the audience can't tell what they are seeing on the screen isn't real. Besides the visual effects, Marvel has spot-on casting. Every role has been thought out carefully, even the supporting roles like Happy, Tony Stark's security guard and friend. While roles in DC movies have been repeatedly changed, including one of their most prominent heroes, Batman, who in recent years has been changed from Kristen Bale to Ben Affleck. Every actor chosen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe plays their role perfectly and understands their characters in a way where they never come off as one-dimensional. Another reason Marvel movies are so successful is because of their accuracy, especially when it comes to costumes. Every superhero that is seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe strongly, if not exactly, resembles the comics. This appeals to the audience because the superheroes that they see on screen look and behave in the same way as the ones they saw in the comics growing up. Marvel also has a better track record with movie critics in comparison to DC. This is showcased on popular movie critic sites like Rotten Tomatoes, where DC's extended universe only has one certified fresh movie. That means the movie has a critic review score of 75% or above, compared to Marvel's 14 verified fresh movies. Marvel has also done better than DC in the box office. Marvel has outsold DC in almost every movie in competing years, with the exception of Wonder Woman film that narrowly beat Spider-Man Homecoming worldwide and still has to compete with the release of Thor Ragnarok. Next month. A ranking of all DC and Marvel movies has shown that Marvel, up, Marvel holds the number one spot with the Avengers gross net worth at $1.6 billion in the Avengers Age of Ultron, which grossed $1.4 billion, and DC comes in at third with their 1978 Superman, which grossed $1.26 billion. Also, Marvel continues to break records. The most recent, recent being that Logan was the fourth highest grossing R-rated movie of all time, bringing in over $589 million, according to Mark Hughes of Forbes. Marvel even continues to break its own records with movies like Thor Ragnarok, which has taken the title of the most anticipated Marvel movie of all time, with its trailer being viewed 136 million, 136 million times in 24 hours, beating out Captain America, which was viewed 94 million times in 24 hours, and a Disney record that was previously held by Beauty and the Beast, which was viewed 128 million times in 24 hours, according to James Gunn, screenwriter of Guardians of the Galaxy, Volumes 1 and 2, and Tom Bacon of Movie, Pocket, movie Pilot. Another reason Marvel has done better than DC cinematically is because their movies are dynamic and better thought out. All the Marvel, all the Marvel movies have been mapped out to where all the superheroes' individual movies are connected, which was started as a lead up for the first Avengers movie. The connection as to why these separate individuals and seemingly unrelated characters have to join together to form a team adds clarity to the universe and shows that every detail was intentional. This lead up occurred over the course of 10 years, but was well worth the wait when the audience finally got to see the quality of the final result. Another example of this in the Marvel Universe is with the X-Men, which has evolved over the course of 17 years and has never wavered in quality. Something else unique about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that the characters are dynamic and deal with real-world stresses. For example, in the third Iron Man, Tony Stark deals with post-traumatic stress disorder after the events from the previous Avengers film. It grounds the character, and the audience gets to see him evolve from the cocky billionaire in the first Iron Man movie to a somewhat humbled, more mature version in the most recent movies. There are many harrowing character developments and scenes like this throughout the Marvel films, like Black Panther's loss of his father, Black Widow's sterilization, and Star-Lord's mother dying from cancer. The most amazing thing of all that Marvel has done in DC has barely scratched the surface of is that they have figured out how to make superheroes relatable in the most personal of ways.
Sorry. 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 But the one thing I, I will give this yeah. MCU has more movies. <laughs> oh yeah. It does. Oh, no, it does. Yeah. MCU. MCU has more movies. But no, no, hold on. Hold on. Like, but you can't consider the MCU as the DCU right now because all the DCU has like three movies. I got into that. Wonder Woman, Superman, and then why is that? Why does it matter? But I don't like the so you can't compare. It's true. You can't. No, you can't. Yeah. 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 I saw the movie that really got me, and then I watched all of it. And then I watched all of it. I'm going to go and see it. I'm going to go and see it. And then it becomes easy at all. So much easier to promise. Okay, Renee. No, no, hold on, hold on. We're talking about all the time. We're talking about the time. We're not talking about the comics. She, she argued cinematics. Yeah. You want to talk about yeah. cinematics? There were bad cinematics for Marvel to play back in Hound the Duck, but it's not the first day of Electra. So, I'm not arguing about this. It's not a duck. Only the MCU counts, I know. Okay, well. We're going to step over the little debate that's going on over here concerning uh, the subject matter that you just talked about and talk about the presentation that you gave. Uh, I think you start off with a claim that sounds like it's going to be a claim of fact uh, when you talk about the success and you're going to compare the level of success of the two properties and I'm going, okay, that, that's fine the way you phrased it, that's working pretty well but almost immediately you kind of revert back to a value claim arguing that one is the best and that's I think a little bit problematic um, and we're going to have to establish what the criteria are going to be that you're going to argue for this and you don't really tell us what those criteria are going to be ahead of time there's no preview of what the structure is going to be uh, you can tell that there's some controversy on this subject because immediately a debate broke out right after you finished talking uh, so I, I appreciate that, that people are looking at these kinds of things. You might talk about uh, maybe a little bit of background about uh, the comic uh, issues or, for example, the competition between the studios and the money that's involved uh, so that we could see why it is that this is something worth spending some time and energy on. Uh, but I think it's understandable that there are people that have a preference for one over the other. Now, the supporting structure in the speech, there is you make claims occasionally but there are lots of claims that get made here and I can't tell when they're separate for example there's a costume claim that you've got at one point but we would already talked about costumes early on in the process so is this a separate point is it a continuation of the point that you had earlier I can't really tell there's not a, a strong structure to the speech at least not one that's evident from an oral presentation it might look different on the page but it does have problems as an oral presentation where there needs to be a little bit more for the audience to be able to follow the patterns that you're talking about I thought that you gave a lot of uh, opinions and explanations uh, now proving those things I think is a little more complicated so you described for instance let's talk about the costumes the integration of uh, practical and CGI with Tony Stark's costume and all of that description is your point of view and you know I don't necessarily disagree with it but uh, if there was a dispute about it uh -huh, on what grounds would we base your preference to somebody's preference for Batman's mega suit in Batman versus Superman I don't know you know I don't really get a an explanation of that uh, or a reason why one would be preferable to the other except that I've got your opinion on it and you're certainly entitled to make your argument there but I think you have to support it with something other than just the self uh, repeating perspective that you have which I, you know like I said is mostly value based you know it, it's an aesthetic decision that you're talking about there if we're talking about success See, I think if you were talking about success, you could, do, you could use some objective criteria. Like you said, box office, critical response, uh, popularity, product sales, um, number of uh, movies that are interdependent, consistency of the story, consistency of the performances, you know, that sort of thing. Those would be standards that we could look at for success. And that's kind of where I think you need to create a lot more structure around those types of things. You've got lots of examples that you refer to. Uh, all of them are, you know, they pop into mind when you're talking about things, but I'm 
as I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking, well, yeah, but that was pretty cool in the DC universe. That was pretty cool in the DC universe. And we're, if we're making comparisons, and we don't really, as I heard these guys talking about just a second ago, we don't really get a very clear sense of how we're going to define these universes. Is it once they've been combined and we've got the continuing story, or are we going to talk about any exploitation of a DC product versus any exploitation of a Marvel product? Because, I mean, at one point you make a comparison to the Superman movie from 1978, and I'm going, well, that's, you know, a, if, that's, if we're going to include the DC Universe there, that's pretty good. And by the way, there's no reference to any of the Batman films from the 80s, which might have been included in that process. The, you do get some description of the Christian Bale movies, the, those movies, later on. So I'm not quite sure where we're going to call this a universe per se versus where these are just products that come from one company versus the other. Uh, I think there is probably a distinguishing characteristic and I think there's a good argument to be made on the issue that you're talking about and I think you found a lot of the things that people prefer one over the other but on the issue of success I think you need to stick to like I said some more objective terminology and concepts. Lots of information in the presentation, but there's also a lot of uh, opinion that is mixed with the information, and it's not always clear when you are citing evidence and when you are simply offering your own conjecture on these points. <laughs> I got one thing I, would, I do want to yell at you about a little bit. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, no, it's on the record. It's okay. I, but, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm trying not to yell at people and say things and say, no, let's be encouraging. Uh, this, this did poke me a little bit. When you start leaning on the podium and reading, it's like I've given up connecting with the audience whatsoever. Sorry. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's a bad habit, and you definitely want to stay away from that. Because it, then it just comes off like, well, I'm just going to read this in front of you. And it's kind of insulting to the audience a little bit. And you, you want the audience on your side. That's the whole point of making an argument, is get them to agree. And if you act like you don't care what they think, you're not going to engage with them, that'll be a problem in the long run. So just fix that. <laughs> All right? All right, thank you. Yeah.